I forgot to press the button to turn on my microphone. Good thing it's only like nine minutes in. Bah. Um, one thing I said when I was muted was, um, after the last stream, I watched a video from Rail about the development of this game. And it's from the same team that... It's from the same team that did Banjo-Tooie. And they just wanted to do a game that wasn't so fucking huge after Banjo-Tooie. Dude, just get it in the file! The bitch just fucking slapped me. No, I mean like, there's like, I'm pretty sure the way it worked back then, there was multiple teams inside of Railvale, and then when they finished Banjo-Tooie, the people who were on that team worked on this game. I'm pretty sure, from what I remember. Craig, you make some fucked up noises for us. Also, when I was googling a bunch of random ass things, and I'm only saying this because I randomly remembered it, I'm pretty sure Diddy Kong Racing was the last um, game from Rail that David Wise walked on. You 
me the key. Ow. the key the keys somewhere mommy's so Catholic dude I need a key Can find a key. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Long door. We all won eight minutes of Legion. You had a lock pick. That's true. <laughs> what the fuck? Zoinks, what do we have? The Koopa Boost icon means don't get hit. That's right, not even once. Breaking the wall means the useful. A lollipop. No, wait, I mean the Reaper. I want a lollipop. Actually, I don't. I don't like lollipops. I lied when I said that. That fucking leg. That random ass leg. I wonder what the RE4 remake is going to be like, but it's probably going to be like RE2 remake. I just hope it's just as fucking goofy as the original was. Oh, it's Mr. Pants. It's Mr. Pants. What's that one above it? I can't read it. It's so fucking small. Hang on. Hang on. Why am I clicking on... I need to see what it says. I still can't read it. Oh. Frame rate. Mr. Pants versus Captain Underpants Death Paddle is a consolation of Mr. Pants in one room of Banjo Tooie. Like in the original? Didn't Mr. Pants like come out on a DS? No way, it was a GBA. Yeah. 
me. How the fuck do I kill a door? How the fuck do I kill a door? Oh, there's a freezing person. No way, they used that sound effect. Oh, I can just beat up the door. Why did it not let me before? I'm going to see it in Steve. Dude, I'm getting my ass beat by a door. Why does it sound like that? sound like that I'm back in the kitchen I don't have the egg yet Me back the egg. Why are you invincible? Ukulele wasn't even in. Oh, wait. I think Ukulele was an idea. Was it? No, wait, no, it wasn't. It was 2015. No, wait, was it? Fuck, I don't remember the timeline. I don't remember the timeline. Why are you a bitch? Come here. Haha. <laughs> oh, that is violent. Oh, Mr. Ribs. What? Please don't hold on, Mr. Ribs. is my trusty assistant. I hope you have asked him to help. Why didn't you fucking tell me he asked me to help? Oh my god. Friends with the skeleton. No broken bones. We taste the egg for cookies. Boy, he, he, he. Mr. Webbs is gonna sue. Ah, uh, it's splattled. It's the Nickelodeon goop. Big old dungweed left foot up potion now. <laughs> You've unlocked co op files in. I believe I've seen some potent dungweed growing in Wallet Garden. To the garden we go. Oh, we're back here. Oh my god. Cause no damage. 
I have to do no damage. But these maids look so funny. Oh, hey, it's the Weeple. Oh my god. Wait, I'm not going the right way. Oh no. No! No! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Oh no, haunted paintings. Oh, bye everyone. I don't know what happened. The Weeple is insta kill. The cloak room. I get out of time. I like that the Weeple's not an instant game oval. But I'm also need to. Oh. No, I don't want to be slow. I want to speed up. I'm tired of being invisible. Oh, this is bad. I gotta go get a time all. I'm probably gonna fail this. Come back here, I think I just need to kill you. Oh no. Where's the Weeple? There he is. Fuck. Come back, kill. Oh, camera. Camera. Oh yeah, the Weeple, the Weeple can kill the enemies. You can do that. I listen, I don't want to punch the dude who can just poke me and I die. Death is Neil. The enemies also had a time wall. <laughs> Sitting room, but I'm standing. What the fuck? Oh, it's that guy. Now things are getting complicated. The next door, next one is difficult. So must not defeat the same. Oh my god, I have to think. The sitting room become the most deep. If you open games through.
Okay, so if I kill the zombie, I have to kill a skeleton. Called a chael. Bye, Mr. Weeple. No, the door. It always does that, but the door. Why am I cross-eyed? Oh, ew. Oh, I... Are you the disrespectful young so-and-so that's been using this thing to make sticky mess all over me clean floors. Oh, right then, must have been someone else. Sorry about that. But now you're here, you may as well take it with your with you and throw it in the trash. Disgusting thing that someone's been doing with it, making file soda pop cans. All right, mess they make then they explode. I know how to read text in games. Hold the right, the, 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 blah, 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 blah. You just shoot it. What's that? The wall garden? It's just do they are in it? Blah, 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 buff, ba buff, bass is my name. By the way, my friends call me Babs. You can call me Miss Buff Bass because you're not my friend. Open the door. <laughs> Demo man TF2. Oh no, is it not doing damage? not doing damage. I gotta put him in the file, I think. Spawning away. Oh. No, don't do that. Real brain damage. Oh. I'm here, a little mammoth. I'm gonna deal with you guys one at a time. There's a cheeky on the wall. Oh my god, it's bottles! This is kind of violent when you think about it. Uh oh. I 
I don't know how you got in the file, but thank you. No. Dude, I can't see with this fucking couch, y'all. Is that a meal or a window? Holy meal. Why is this game called Grab by the Ghoulies? Because we got grabbed by the Ghoulies! What's not to get? What do I do? Oh wait, is this a door? It's so scary! And I go towards it. What the fuck is that? It's so it's, There's a dung weed. Pick me up, juicy one, and hoy on back to the kitchen. You may want to try breathing in through your mouth for a while, though. Let me just call him Young Leon. Ew, I can smell from here. It's Walston and Amble's feet. Okay. Put your brutal back to do anything else on your belly. I don't know that this might be if it's the thruster of the shrimp mess yet. Play stop. Oh God, I got a waking hit. You crent. You dumbass. <laughs> That's my prize winning plan from the Ghoulsville Town Fair of 66. Get it back for me, you blundering puffoons. Don't fuck with me, I have a gun. Is the weeple out because I got hit? Oh, he is. Get off me! Do I have to light them on file? Dude, get off me! Where do I go? Okay, that walks. I think some of them just don't get damaged. Study. 
The floor is so shiny. Why? Oh, this is a boss fight. Just, just seeing Clyde. No, you, no. I can cheese the game. I'm a cheese Lily. I'm a cheese y'all. Sounds complete. But I didn't even find a key. Trudgy people! Wow! I did it! I did it! Xbox memory limitations means we can only have two Left 4 Dead survivals at once. Damn. Oh no, it's closed. Time to kill. Time to kill. Die. All of you die. Uh oh. Come on. That was that was so close, man. I'm on Xbox One. Hey you, I thought I told you to throw that thing in the garbage. Look at the mess you've gone and made here. Gimme it. I could get rid of it myself. No, not you. No, the door was open. No. Wait, are you on my side? I gotta get him in the file. Dude, you're such a bitch. No thinking! You Camille. Fuck. He just won't come y'all. Get the fuck out of here, Mumbo. Stop thinking. Dude, you're a little fucking bitch. Run away. Go to the file. Oh, that's not what I wanted.
Dude, I just wanna get this man to die. Ow! Asshole! Ow! Dude, don't go this way! Dude, I'm losing my mind. He's stuck in this fucking corner for some reason. I gotta give it to the fireplace, but he just won't fucking move. You have to do this. Clay, don't. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Fuck you! Oh my god, he won't die. Get up. Get up. I think I have to hit him in the face. I don't think it really let me blow him in a file. This is actually kind of sad, now I'm thinking about it. But the game's making me fight him, so... Uh, I got the achievement notification on my PC because Xbox does that for some fucking reason. Imagine if Nintendo had achievements, but instead of you getting a pop-up, you got an email. Such a fucking crybaby. Get back here, bitch. Dude, this is the fucking most annoying enemy. Let me fucking hit your face. Genocide root, I need to burn this fucking house down. And everyone hit it. Wait, what? Oh, he has a limited number of tacks to use? Basically, gotta use this to kill everything.
Hey, I did it. Can I give... Clay, I will probably never play that game if you buy it for me. I just want to stream grab the goalies. Easy peasy. If I give it to you, will you stick? No. No. Stream it yourself. You have the power of Twitch streaming. Oh, doesn't that mean I only... Oh my god. Oh my god, I just got fucking comboed. Oh wait, that holds me. Dude, I have four hit points. Make that zero. If I gifted you personal Twitch at least. No! I'm never gonna stream that game. It doesn't appeal to me. Clay, I'm busy streaming Grab by the Ghoulies. Can you please stop asking me to play this game? Please. Clay. What the fuck, this stupid door. Get away from me. Oh, I'm trapped. Oh my god, this fucking room. At least like, if I kill them before the door spawns, and I won't have to do it with them. I hate the door. It's tall. Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> I want this door to die. Then I want this door to die. Why is that door tiny? Those crest markers, it doesn't know if you'll kill it. Where'd you go? Where did I go? Oh my god. I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. I just, I hate this fucking room. I hate, I hate, I'm so... Oh, mm. why is this room so fucking annoying? It's because the fucking door is a bitch. 
The fucking door is a bitch. Oh my god. I'm so having fun with my 10 hit points. I'm having fun. Oh my god! I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind at this fucking game. Like... Why does this room, out of all fucking rooms, why does this room suck? Like, I'm literally pressing the stick as they're swinging, but because of the fucking, like, delay in my attack, it doesn't fucking matter. And every time I get hit, my fucking weapon breaks immediately. It's so stupid. Like, this room probably isn't even the worst room in the game. It's just, this fucking door sucks. You could just do that. You can just be invisible and you can walk through the hitbox like nothing happened. Okay. Oh my goodness, how me out again, young and he's not heading home there with those the kick of the troubles. Uh oh, time. Am I hearing guagua? Gua? Gua. Gua. Oh my god, there's so many. Fuck, I'm on file. Dude, what the fuck? That's the last thing I want to fucking experience right now. Hold on, bye bye, go join your cauldron. Let's put in the dung of weed. Dung weed is mighty fine. Now we have all the ingredients. Let's mix them into the pot. <gasps> it's gotta put this sodium chloride in it. This concoction will make your girlfriend white as vain. Now get yourself down them stairs and sprinkle a few drops on a pretty little f You You make it and you don't even give it to her to drink. You just pour it on her face. Oh yeah, we just left my girlfriend down here. Let's look more delicious on the box out. On the box out. The box out for Gogots. I didn't know Gogots was a video game. Go 
we'll go around the box out. Yeah, any photo of food is most likely not edible. Dude, baby Koopa! I don't think I've ever had a Gogolot. If I have, I probably don't remember. Well, look at all these things. Dude, you're a bitch of a skeleton. Wait, what was the thing I was supposed to do? Fuck. Oh wait, it was- No! The controls went to normal! I'm not- The controls went to normal and I went down! I got poked! Well, that fucking blows. Who's the repo? Where is the repo? Oh, there it is. one that made him dizzy oh. become a dizzy and bro just juke the repo Dude, I need the little baby fucking Koopa. This one. No, I fucking died. Fuck. Oh, this sucks. Maybe, maybe the technique should be like get every enemy to spawn first, and then freeze them. punched where the fuck is th oh my god the repo's right there it's not being dizzy I 
see you. I see you. I see you back there. Fuck. They, they broke all of my weapons. Dude, come on. Uh. Hey, Weeple, can you poke him? Please don't. Please don't. I think he's slightly faster than me. Yeah. He's fucking just slightly, slightly fast off. Oh my god. What fucking. How did the key not spawn? I killed all of them. How the fuck? Did one not spawn in the middle? Okay. I think I do gotta go one at a time and I gotta play small. No, I didn't mean to grab that. That would have been so useful oil. I mean, ladle. God damn it. Don't poke me. Beat up the Weepo! Ah! <laughs> hate these fucking pirates. I think they're attacking Cholo now. I didn't mean to grab that! I keep fucking grabbing my back to it. There's one right here. Oh yeah, there's one. God fucking damn it!
No. Please. Go deliberately close so he points. Boom. We got a model. I think it's the fucking spital. I think it's the fucking spital. I'm so fucking upset at how bullshit this is. If it's just the spital, does that mean I don't need to do any of these except this one? Because that's where the spital spawned. Because the spital was the one that was glowing. What does this do? Anyway. I don't remember. God fucking damn it. Okay, Spidal. Are you serious? You missed? You fucking missed? You fucking missed? You fucking missed? I knew it. I thought I would have to kill all of them and the last one would drop the key. And I'm so happy to have been wrong. I, if I, I wish it took me uh, not as fucking long to figure that out. He's bringing you back to your beautiful self. I've got a uh, spare few drops all over you. Uh-oh. Oh, she's, is she becoming evil? Dude, this game is just being so fucking mean to Amble. Oh my god. Why does the combat in this game suck? This... Like, the timing is just bullshit. The timing for every fucking enemy's attack is so bullshit.
Like you can literally sit you can literally fucking see me start my attack and they start the attack after mine, but they'll just fast off. Oh my god, don't fucking combo me. Oh this I didn't even fucking see you! Why are you such a bastard? Oh my fucking god! Do I even need to do this fight? Can I just find a door and leave? Can I just leave? Nope, both doors are closed. Fuck me. This, I guess this is a boss fight. Well, that actually kind of helped me. What the fuck? Look at that! This bullshit! Does every Rainbow game have to have complete bullshit parts to it? What the fuck? I hate this. This game has been getting on my nerves so much. This stream. The last stream, it wasn't bad, but. Oh, fuck off. Like, she's literally faster than I could even react. If I had good fucking oh. oh my god. Dude, she's fucking comboing me. She's fucking comboing me. Like I get knocked back, but if I punch her nothing happens. Yeah, fail. Fail, fail, fail. So fast. Why is she so fucking fast? Where's the fucking. There it is. Yeah. Dude, where the fuck is that one going? I'm like actually getting sick and tired of this game so much. Like, this game just stopped being fun. It is now fucking bullshit. What the fuck? The game, like, actually stopped being fun. Like, to the point where I'm debating if I even want to finish this game.
This fucking kill me, man. Oh, yeah, you go slow when I want you to kill me. Okay, cool. Okay, I have I have a vague plan. I just need to remember where that fucking golden base was. It was over there. All. Uh. Dude, fucking bitch. If I get the golden vase, I totally can kill this. Hey, I just hoped she was there all. I forgot the check mark. I put the X in the thing, not the check mark. Ah, oh, the Nickelodeon goop. Good thing the next few panels spoil what's about to happen. Haha, uh -huh, no kiss. Ooh. Sorry about that, my deals. It's like mix up with the ingredients. Still no real harm done. No real harm done. There should be a go up the inner bookcase, up the stairs, and back to the hallway. We must leave this horrible place. They kill me, darlings. Yeah, we must fucking leave and never come back. Please stay. Please don't beat Mr. Poems again. You rescue many strange. You rescue many strange girl and boy prisoners. We not help or nasty Baron do same to Mr. Whips and Cookie. Please go see Mr. Kevin's in this room. He'll know what to do. Oh. Oh. Oh, they all. Yeah, I, I. Am I gonna have to go through this entire game? Like the. All of it again and rescuing those people I saw. Why couldn't you just give me the keys? I ain't going near that crazy butler dude again. You go pay him a visit. I'll go with Bonehead here and try to find a phone to call for help. I don't want to deal with whatever the fuck the game is going to throw at me. No harm done, even though that boss fight caused lots of emotional harm. This whole chap, the whole chapter caused so much emotional harm to me. I can't slash the TV. Oh, I can't kill the TV. Jiggy! No. Oh no, the cost mummy is issued a cost and so it's been caught by it. 
Uh, so it has until the cost time will once out to ex exit the room or to defeat the cost mummy. This sucks. Ah! This really is the Banjo Tui team. All I fucking want is a key. I don't know where that key is. I don't know if I want it. Those things with the wearable icon on it, and that usually means there's probably something. There it is. This game is driving me insane. Like, it's genuinely driving me nuts. Oh, it's me. Can anyone save the pork? If it's these wing monsters, I'm staying here till they do so. So many. Dude, I'm, I'm trying to fucking find a weapon. This is not fail. This is not fail game design. Again, this is not fail game design. Oh, the couch is broken. Just let me pick up the fucking- oh my god. Dude, okay. In the RPG Mega Horror game, The Witch's House, you beat the game by waiting outside the house for an hour. Nice. Hmm. My, oh my, what a mess these rotten imps have made. I feel miss... But fast is not going to like this one little bit. Hmm. Thanks for fighting so bravely on my behalf. Hmm? Now I hear young soldiers to try help this unfortunate soul of the no good house. Oh. I guess. Oh. Thank you. Hmm. Most brave of you, though, now the only mold of us to keep your luck, those poor witches. Is Baron Von Ghoul himself. Fuck. However, I'm afraid the door to his corridors is sealed by a powerful magical rhyme. Hmm. Ooh. 
Once I had the babe, I went down, but that uncocked fiddle's wolf pulled the band and he confiscated it. Hmm. I slipped it up in three pieces, hid them in the fall fung reaches of the house. Don't be this hot and young, so I happen to know exactly where they are. Only in the greenhouse, not in the stables, mm -hmm. and this is the call final pieces held by the mad Dr. Crackpot in the ghoul making laboratory. Mm -hmm. Dude, I can count. May I recommend we start with the greenhouse, go upstairs and down the further mm -hmm. to the. Well, it is just the sort of store across the lawn to do the card. It's got a little luck store. Fuck you, go collect 25 more jiggies. At least there's only three, but it's still annoying. Mm. Like, this game could have just ended, but no. No. Warlock? Oh no. What the fuck? Cool. Always wanted to die in two hits. They just let you go to the final boss, but they just put two bullet bullets there for no fucking reason. No, I can't put it down, and it has to explode. It has to explode. I have like losing all patience for this game. shot is impossible to avoid. Like how the f what the fuck? I so want to fucking quit this game. I've stopped having fun. And it's not even funny. This game is just so fucking repetitive. And the rooms just keep getting dumb on dumb off. Like, how many chapters are- we just started chapter 3. Like, I 
Okay, so I just there's five chapters, but apparently chapter four is just one boss fight. Um. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Maybe, maybe I, maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm just done with this fucking game. Maybe I don't want to play it anymore. Maybe I just don't want to play this game anymore. Yeah, better cool. <laughs> I at least want to fuck around until we hit the two hour mark, but I'm not starting another serious playthrough. Diggle T Vok! Diggle T Vok, the legend of the lost city. This looks so much like a random generic NES game. Probably because that's what it is. The fun part of game compilations. Diggle T Rock. Playing my N favorite NES game on the Xbox One. Wait, that's it? No, how do I? Oh, I'm dead! Oh my god, I fucking disintegrate it. Oh, was that like a bonus level? This game's boring. I just want to do one more, one more something. Oh God, Battle Toads. Super Battle Toads, Color Instinct Gold, Sega Dreams Collection. Like most of the N64 games would just be 60, except Conco and I guess Blast Corpse as well. Okay, let's do Battletoads Arcade. I have a vague feeling that I played this game as a kid. Like, I think maybe my cousin brought it over and we played it. Yeah, they have Conco. Oh, Super Nintendo. I don't know if this is the only Super Nintendo one in here because it's Killing Stink Gold, which I think was on the 64. I could have rammed your fucking hide so I can't. I couldn't. Oh, this rewind. And the rewind is actually like very logical. You just press the button and it goes. Dude, why does the animation look so fucking wonky? What is going on? Dude, I love Super Nintendo. I wish it wasn't so fucking expensive to buy games for. I really gotta buy an NES as well. I should have bought that one. I saw Value Village. Like I would, I. It was like 
40 bucks, I think, and it came with nothing, but it was still, like, the best NES deal I've seen in Fable, but I just didn't want to risk it. It came with nothing. No cable, no anything. Yeah, I... You gave me an insane deal on that, but at the same time, the, if I wanted to buy that now, like, if I didn't have it and I wanted to buy it, it would cost me so much money. Like, I... I, ironically, I bought Donkey Kong Country 2 as a gift for my mom, and I got a good deal on it. But because it was a gift for my mom, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to get a deal like that for my own copy. So I'm kind of just out of luck. I'm not really, like, paying any attention to the game. I'm just pressing buttons. The walk animation is so stupid. I had a shitty thing, Geek 2 and 1. Yeah, you gave me one of the controllers and I still have it. I mean, the Battletoads has a new game. Not new new anymore, but it came out a few years ago. Okay, I'm bored. What did I unlock? You unlock new video in the Rebel View Gallery. Would you like to go there now? I am going now. The making of what game? What magical game can I look at the making of? Of make it a battle toast. Which, dude, I want I want that one. Battletoads is a, a beat em up game. Battletoads is a platform beat em up game. A platform beat em up strategy racing. Uh, Battletoads. <laughs> Battletoads is uh, a game that we produced uh, featuring three characters, which were toads, called Rash, Zitz, and Pimple. We wanted a, a set of characters. Yeah, they did we, mention uh, them. Like, they did mention those games, but only in the videos yeah, the for Batman other games. Film had just hit the movies, and we were looking at all of the different merchandising that you could buy for the film and for the character, and we wanted something like that. The T-shirts, the plastic models, the bedspreads, everything. At the time with Battletoads, I can remember Tim being very impressed by uh, Ninja Turtles. So He's an old man! A sort of tongue-in-cheek version, or at least I thought it was meant to be a tongue-in-cheek version of the Turtles. So it's kind of a, a typical example of Rares looking at what was popular and then, and then kind of putting our spin on it, kind of amping it up, making it a bit more edgy, a bit more kind of violent. We went through all, all kinds of ideas and names. I think well, I was going to call them the Amphibians at one time, but um, we ended up with Battletoads and that worked. I wanted it to look kind of Disney-like, but I wasn't anywhere near a good enough artist for that. So um, we came up with a few uh, different gimmicks. And David White's balding moments. The hands moments. expanding and the foot turning into a huge boot. I think the, the ability to be able to transform limbs rather than carry actual weapons around, that's what made them unique. I think if you picked up the, the original NES version of Battletoads now, I think you get a bit of a shock because it was a very precise, very difficult game to play. Back then they were kind of quite short games, so one way of getting more kind of playability was to uh, provide the player with a with a decent level of challenge. Mark, who was oh, this looks player, bullshit. Was, was was like a really talented player, so he'd he'd set the general difficulty level around what he was good at. He made it so difficult. And you had what to the be fuck, Mark? To the hundredth of the second when to press the button on the controller. At the time, we were we were avid game players, and, and it got to the point where I could I could do the turbo tunnel without losing a life. We we even tried to do the um, the last section with the really fast walls with our eyes closed, and we got really close to finishing it. But uh, 
No one could ever do it. The reviews were quite complimentary on, on kind of not only how challenging it was, everyone liked it, but the, I think the variety of the levels was the key to how well it was received, right? On one level, it would be sideways scrolling doing one thing, the next level you'd be on a rope going down a thing, then you'd Dude, be on a tunnel. Dude, there's a turbo tunnel, tunnel yeah. Like that one's infamous for being bullshit. The snake. It, it like jumped around all over the place. It was such a breath of fresh air in terms of um, the, the breadth of gameplay in it. In the arcade version of Battletoads, we were able to be even more over the top with the, the violence, the comedy violence, than the NES, because there was obviously certain restrictions on what we could produce for a console. So we, we went as pretty much extreme as we could be, and I think that was that was to the benefit of the product. It took a long time to produce because it, it was all a new kind of game for us, but it was a fun one to work with. It was like building a car, and you start with no parts, so you've got to just start manufacturing each of the parts and then putting them together. Chris Stamper started working on the board. He actually made the, the, the arcade board himself. Oh, damn. Meanwhile, we had to write all the software. Well, I had to write all the software from scratch. So all the audio drivers, um, all the audio software, all the graphic software, there'd be points where we'd tweak it and we'd say, oh, the hardware is not fast enough here. We need to make some changes. And then he'd add that in and then we'd change the software again. So there was really- Dude, that's that the crazy thing about right. making arcade games is that if the hardware is not good enough, you just upgrade the hardware and, and, taught me a lot and then about boom. Very different type of design, which wasn't all about let's try and keep the player playing for hours. It's literally let's get the player on the machine, let's take some money off them, let's kill them off as quick as possible, but let's make sure they've had a good enough time so they want to put more money in. At the end of Battletoads Arcade, we had a boss called Robomanis that you tried to beat, and we were having trouble balancing the game so it felt like you could beat him if you were uh, on your own when you weren't that good, versus if there was three players coming in and you know, really hitting him. Uh, we hit upon this idea of, of making him um, super tough at the start, to, even to the point where you couldn't actually do any damage to him. For the first 45 seconds, nothing you did actually affected him in any way, but it looked like it did. Probably the best idea I've ever had in the industry. <laughs> it's like, uh, how can we make the final boss take our money? I know. I love how they could just, I love how since it's been so long they're just admitting all this shit. Uh, there was a few games that we did that uh, actually had a crossover element to them. Uh, I think uh, one of the ones, which was a, a rather odd one. Was oh yeah, this Battle one. Toads Double Dragon. I'm guessing it came from. I'm pretty uh, sure Battletoads Double Dragon is uh, like trade rest one of the more expensive games on NES. Both Battletoads and uh, Double Dragon. It just seemed a bit nuts to have uh, these cartoon characters with uh, expanding this is on the nes that's insane and drills uh, mixed up with these martial oh, arts this? dudes from a, an arcade machine then there's the uh, the toad i've heard about that game but i haven't really it's seen much of worm. it we were pondering whether to make the toads have better moves oh it's on the nes stronger, so and the snes like and the genesis but, um, in the end we did we did the right thing and, and uh, the game boy it's fairly balanced from Battletoads, I think we were going to try and do a spin-off game called Warhogs with a character called Captain Pork. I think that was Tim's design. I can remember drawing these two um, characters that were like big, chunky Warhog <laughs> bikers, and uh, they were going to shout pork swords every time they went into battle, but uh, we didn't do it eventually. Battletoads ran over several different consoles and we had a Game Boy version, a Super NES version, an NES version, an arcade machine. We had a cartoon, so it's had a pretty good run of it, but I think it'd be quite a nice one to be revived. Um, I'd always love to see mm. a Toads game out there. Mm. Mm. Mido, this came out in 2015. Dude, Game Boy Port's all the funniest. I have a wild idea of where to take this stream. Dude, I would love to just watch some of these, man. Oh my god, any of these seem cool? Sundown. Probably like an Xbox era or something.
fast in the four years. Is this just Banjo or is it like a crossover? Okay, you know what, you know what, you know what? Um, I thought about like hooking up my SNES and fucking around with some Game Boy games, but I want to watch more of those videos. I want to watch more of those videos, so I guess I, I'm going on YouTube. Was there any sensitive info though? No. No sensitive info. Where we play Rail Revealed. Just give me a playlist of all these fucking videos. Okay, here we go. Playlist. Like, I know some of them they've uploaded on. Like, there's some exclusive ones that are on the YouTube channel, like the one for Grab by the Ghoulies. But. The ones that are in the game, I don't think they've uploaded. Like, here, here's the one that was for Grab by the Ghoulies. Oh, the name came first, actually. I, I can't remember exactly where from, but uh, um, I recall someone in the conversation mentioning the phrase Grab by the Ghoulies and thought, hmm, that should make a, a good name for a game at some point. The captions are the auto. Grab by the Ghoulies is a romp through a haunted house. You play as Cooper. Him and his girlfriend have been um, ambling through the countryside, and all of a sudden, she's kidnapped by Baron Von Ghoul and taken into this weird, dark-looking mansion. And so Cooper goes into the house to try and rescue her through uh, the traditional method of beating up everything in sight. You basically went from room to room, and each room was a self-contained, almost like a puzzle. You had to either kill everything in the room, or you had to smash all the items in the room, which was quite cool for those days. And you take on skeletons and zombies and mummies and little weird imps. And yeah, you just got to smash and crash your way through to uh, rescue the ember. Yeah, yeah the game is lame. Hang on, let me, let me go on to... Not Roblox. Why did I click Roblox? Uh, Glitch Wave. I'm gonna, you're going to show... I'm going to show you raiding this game. Grab by the ghoulies. I'm raiding it live on stream. I hate how laggy this game, this website is. They haven't updated this site in so long. What are my things? Phenomenal, amazing, great, pretty good. What are I, what, what else are I given a three? Roblox stream. <laughs> I've given Roblox a three. About 2.5. Like, it's pretty good. It just gets tiled very fast, so it becomes decent. Yeah, I'm giving it a 3. Okay, back to the video. Finish Banjo 2. Um, let's go crash back. Your way through to, uh, rescuing Ember. We finished Banjo 2. They, um, they just... The same cool team. Same team. Sort of I told you. ...when Rare became part of Microsoft. So then, just how it all worked out, that ended up being the first title released by Rare as part of Microsoft. So the biggest technical challenge to begin with was the transition, because obviously Ghoulies had been built up on the, the Dolphin, on the GameCube, and then transitioned over to the Xbox itself. Now, it wasn't meant to be a massive 80-hour game. It was meant to be something you could do quite quickly. And Greg came up with the idea of Grab by the Ghoulies, I remember the pitch doc. So, oh, that sounds like the perfect antidote to a big, massive, sprawling platform adventure game. Uh, I want to do like a, a fun take on a beat-em-up, uh, and that's kind of where it came from over 
been massive fan of Scooby Doo and kind of had that firmly in my mind of uh, putting a character in, in a kind of a Scooby Doo esque haunted house, which is uh, more funny than scary. It was designed so that anybody could pick it up and play. Um, I think we spent a good few months just working on the fighting mechanics. Many games to kind of get a lot of functionality into a fighting system means lots of buttons. Grab by the Ghoulies just used the, the two sticks. So you'd walk in one direction with one stick and then you'd just point the other stick in the direction you wanted to attack. Okay. <laughs> no more. Grab by the Ghoulies. No more. No more. No more. No more. Okay, here we go. This is like the unseen. Give me like this one. I'm curious about like what the hell is this? I'm Will Iverson, and I was a concept artist on Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious is Rare's homage to karting games. With inspiration taken from Diddy Kong Racing, who strove to update the genre. Diddy Kong Racing? Taking rare own character. Well, what the fuck, Banjo? What the fuck, Banjo? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. We aim to make each wheel special, giving them appropriate. Hang on. The Xbox avatars. The Xbox. Wait, they fucking did kill Kazooie. <laughs> Holy shit. Giving them appropriate real world vehicles that match their style. Players could That's... affect and be affected by the incident. Dude, this fucking. This concept out is insane. Also, he's gotta be in a lot of pain. Like, holy shit. Like the grand and detailed scale. On a large level, the characters carry Banjo's magical wrench, wielding it much like Banjo's magical wrench. Why? Why does Banjo just drive a pickup truck? Why does Banjo just drive a pickup truck? Like a lasso, enabling them to destroy and build bridges, to pick apart opponents' cars, and take the vehicle's parts for themselves. What the fuck? Kind of. That's a. That is way too wild of a concept. On a smaller scale, they could take an advantage by riding in the tire tracks of those in front to gain speed and alter their perfect route. Players could even build a car suited to their racing type, whether they wanted speed, the ability to bash others out of the way, or to leave booby traps on the road. If Banjo Nuts and Bolts was rare as Lego, then Fast and Furious was as Duplo. Du Duplo? Immediately accessible. These vehicles could have any accessory or weapon attached. The player was free to let their imaginations run wild. It was all about changing the track, changing the car, and changing the way you play. Oh my god, the prototype. This definitely would have been a 360 era railroad type thing. Are there any like actual gameplay or was it just this? Who the fuck is that cheetah? Who is that character? That character. Top secret tunes. Some Twelve Tales music. What a happy little game with a happy little character. Leaked video. It was leaked by a former Ray employee. So, Goldeneye was interesting. 
Rare was highly successful, and Mr. Yamauchi actually got the license. Bond is very popular in Japan, just, just like the rest of the world. So he went to Rare and said, hey, you should make use of this IP. And most of the... Wait, there was a fucking behind-the-scenes one for Conkle. I really want to see that one. Behind... Okay, here we go. I really want to see this one. Like, I've seen that video they uploaded on YouTube with them talking about, like, 12 Tales, but I want to actually know about specifically Bad Full Day. So Conker started out as a cute platformer. He was a standard Nintendo character. Squeaked, jumped, Mario 64 had just arrived on the scene and that was a game changer, I suppose, in terms of the next generation of games. Of course, as soon as everyone saw that, we were like, okay, I guess we better do something like that. There was an awful lot of content and there was lots of fun ideas, but it just really wasn't gelling as a finished game. And what happened was, is Banjo came along and they completely <laughs> torpedoed us. I think Conquer, as it was, was sort of floundering as a concept because it was too similar. Clay, how do you not know? To be fair, I grew I, I out of all N64 Rayo games, this was the one I grew up with. This one, not any of the other ones. I didn't even know of a Banjo Kazooie as a child. Chris Siever took over. He was working on art and then became a designer on it. I took the initiative <laughs> and I came up with an idea and I put my work. I think he just wanted to give it a bit more of an edge, really. Which is kind of his character as a person. So we thought, well, let's just go for the comedy element, but let's make it more kind of edgy in terms of its um, violence. Let's get some narrative in there so we can get the personality of the character out. For me, there was one key moment which turned it into the game that it was. I think Tim came up with the idea for the, the beehive. The beehive had been stolen from the bees by the nasty wasps. But what wasn't in there was the reason, the narrative, and the punch. You're being chased by wasps, and you're coming down the path, and you have to return the queen her hive. What can we do with that? Like, we'll make it violent. <laughs> we'll have we'll have one made completely over the top. That was such a good game. I've never made it that far out of, out of what I've played, but I've seen playthroughs of the Utah game. I should stream this game sometime, but I, I it definitely won't be my next game. Um, now that I've given up on Grab by the Ghoulies, fuck that game. kind of the light bulb moment I suppose for that game and he, he showed we showed that to Tim and Chris and they went yes love it just make more of that Conquer was has evolved over its life and one of the things that came out of, of when we were designing levels were the movie parodies I think the first one was the Terminator and in the bottom it was each time you hit it a bit would drop off uh, and in the cutscene the bit dropped off his eye and you can see behind that it was a, a robot Oh, we can get some Terminator keys in here. Who the nine millimeter? I'm ready, sweetie pie. Just tell me when to shoot. And that's really where it came from. It was like, oh, but actually, that worked really well because it gives us, it gave us cues for things like music, it gave us ideas for for the design itself, for, for the gameplay. So we did the catfish one, which is a Godzilla. I mean, there were films around at the time, so, so it was very much like a, kind of a, um, a zeitgeisty thing. The Saving Private Ryan one. Okay, well, we've got a beach and we've got to get up there. We spent a lot of time really trying to get that feeling of, you know, the movies that you know and love. I spent months animating squirrels on fire, <laughs> legs falling off and their arms falling off, and there's a part where the squirrel picks up an arm and it's just back on and he's like Ooh. Um, and I dreamt about squirrels like burning for like a long time it had a real effect on me <laughs> I'm glad she <laughs> cares about a walk getting hints of some of those soundtracks and the matrix being another obvious one with the lobby scene and that was quite a good 
interact with a piece of music actually so when you you could hit the bullet time at any point so we we had this kind of channel fade on the music that kind of slowed down and went into this dreamy slow thing <laughs> back into the kind of hard hitting industrial beat if, if it hadn't have been the Matrix, if the movie parodies hadn't been there, the gameplay would have been completely different. And probably not as good. So they, comp they really complement each other. Cutscenes were kind of the reward, the sort of payoff at the end of the joke, the equivalent of our, you know, Mario style. We had no script whatsoever. We'd say, this it's kind of this, it's kind of that. Yo, no that script? That's, That's insane. And I think that helped because it meant that it was a lot more fluid. This worked because Chris was designing it, so he had a very good understanding of what they did. Dude, the Great Mighty Poo concept art. The Great Mighty Poo concept art. Look at him. Look at him. The next task was, you know, what you were going to do. A lot of the, the creativity, certainly a lot of the funny stuff, just came out of the spontaneity of what we were doing. We were so excited whenever a new scene came in. We knew we had something special because we'd still be giggling about it months later. Or just the way a certain animation was or a way a certain word was said. You'd normally stick to death in a game by the time it's finished. Chris was doing like all the voices in Conquer. He wanted me to do a couple of the other characters as well. So he goes to me, we, we want Barry to be like American, so can you do an American accent? And I was like, literally never been anywhere in my life. I'd just flown over from Dublin. All I could think of was to add life every so often because <laughs> you've reached like Barry's place. Oh, even now when I hear it, I cringe. You don't spoil the ending. What about when I stream it? Even though I already know what happens, but still. I'll make him laugh. And he just said I wanted a boss that's a big giant turd that sings an opera. Probably one of the most memorable characters in the Congo. Me, 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 me. I am the great mighty poo, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. A huge supply of peas comes from my chocolate stuffy. How about some scat, you little twat? It's really random. Oh, it's him. A giant toilet roll and a giant cream monster. So something beautiful had to come from that, and we're lucky it was Mr. Marlow and his voice. He does a fair. Oh bit my God! How much of dramatics and he's well into his singing. So I know originally it was supposed to be these little street porn, and me and Ashley were going to be like Mighty Poo's <laughs> backing singers. It's gonna be hard to beat that. It'll probably be on my gravestone. <laughs> Here lies Chris Marlowe, voice of the great Mighty Poo. <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call a bowel movement. So the original design was actually a lot bigger. Oh. It was a much bigger game. We built a map, uh, and it had, and it, it kind of got added to. Things got merged into other things. Chris had the clever idea of getting the start sorted and the end sorted. And then it doesn't matter what you chop out of the middle, because people just won't know if you're going to be there. When I started, there was this huge sprawling land. By the time I ended, like, most of the head... Oh. The worlds had been cut out, and we just had focused on these these bits in, in, in the centre. There are all these paths... I just remember oh. looking at it one day and seeing lots of X's through a there, used, there was gonna be more cheese. There was gonna be way more cheese. Two Damn. Like, we want to get this done in time. <laughs> we gotta get rid of all this shit. I mean, that's literally what game development is. When you have the timeline coming, you cut so much of the game. Mainly, the game is intact. Most of the stuff, surprisingly, is intact. I mean, if you look at the amount of mechanics that are in Kong. <laughs> you know, normally the first hour of a game is the most fun. It's all fresh. But in Conquer, it's still fresh at the end, and I think that's possibly why when people play it, they're surprised. Like, Ooh. I thought this was just about a swearing squirrel. There was an amazing, I think it was in an, in Vegas at some some English pub where they showed it to the press for the first time because this was kind of 
I suppose they were also doing some really small tales due to sort of uh, Mario esque type platformer. And they showed them the Great Mice 2, which was the big big thing where everyone's like, what? What is <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. It, everyone was laughing and stuff, but I think there was probably as many people with their jaws on the floor. Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, this is Nintendo. Nintendo were very lenient, really, with an awful lot of stuff. And Nintendo really supported it. Um, you know, to the point that at E3, even though they showed it behind closed doors, they built a, a, you know, a proper bar where you had to show. Oh my God, play. Nintendo built a bar for Conco. Play the game. Go. I mean, I played it fairly recently, and I'm I'm shocked at some of the stuff. I probably would change some of the stuff now. The obvious one is the uh, the sunflower uh, sequence. Like, no, I can't. I couldn't do that. Anymore. If it was made now, and if it was the same team, it wouldn't. I don't think we'd see a game that people would want because they'd want the original Conquer. But again, we're not the people to make that game. I don't know what people would change. My taste would change and I've moved on. You'd have a hard time getting it made now. So, so the only way for anyone to play it is to play the original. Because I don't think there's going to be anything else like the game. I like the fact that the, the, like he he said that. Because, like, that is very, like, true. Like, there, there can never, like, be a proper sequel to Conquer because it would never have, like, the same magic. Even the fucking remake. Even the remake. Oh, of course, the comments is like, well, yeah. Dude, if... If this game got on Switch Online, that would be fucking insane. To make you Mr. Pants! So, Mr. Pants. Mr. Pants. Uh, Mr. Pants. This is one of the Mr. YouTube exclusive Pants. ones. It was, I mean... It's Mr. Pants. Mr. Pants is a crassly drawn stick man who was created by Lee Loveday in an attempt to bring some quirky British humour to our website. And apparently he sent out a call to try and get an artist to draw him a character and no one would. So just to kind of spite everyone, he drew this horrible stick figure. Which was like a kind of fat matchstick man wearing pants with a bowler hat and a clipboard. So he was completely official. I'm not sure if everybody in America fully understood the concept because what they term pants, Mr. Pants doesn't actually wear typical kind of rare story people liked it they thought it was hilarious and then um not only became popular coconut the crackles game, and you know he was used in several games so some of the game boy titles have got mr pants in he was certainly used in jet force but what the fuck pants, she he appeared in, in banjo 2 in the end so holy shit two places that he started cropping up he represented us he existed before years. the game um and he's also worked his way into some of our games and starred in one of his own it's Mr. Pants is a puzzle game. I mean, it's along the lines of Tetris in as much as you move. I can literally imagine, like, Playbell getting the news that they can't use Donkey Kong for this game they're working on, the Game Boy Advance, and just thinking, like, fuck it, let's use this joke character we have fucking around. We blocks onto the, onto the space when you get blocks in a certain shape. It clears. So it was it was kind of traditional, but it had a, a, a few neat twists on it. One of the things that um, I'm quite proud about with Rare is that we have basically attacked every single genre, and puzzles are something that we hadn't actually looked at at that point. Tim Stamper and Greg Mails had been talking about how we could come up with a different set of rules for something that was engaging and had depth to it. When I first started, I was sitting next to Paul Maccheck, who was a programmer who was working on a what? When I first started. He just has pants hanging from a Viva Pinata painting in his house. I was sitting next to Paul Maccheck, who was a programmer who was working on a puzzle game that had been at Rare for a long time. In 1999, in the early stages of Banjo-Tooie production, uh, Tim came to me with a sheet of A4 paper with a handful of rules on it and, and asked me if I could implement that on a pocket system. During the course of its life, it changed from being a very abstract version of the game, which I think the original version was called Tartan. There was an isometric 3D version based on Donkey Kong, which was Coconut Crackers. I think, I think that got shown publicly. So initially, it 
Like I've shown publicly. Does a vom for it? Oh my god. Yeah, that is the same game. It why is why does it have to be isometric? Why does it have to be isometric? Treehouse Direct UK, Donkey Kong. I don't want to think about the fact that the Donkey Kong Country TV shows on YouTube uploaded by Treehouse UK. One of our musicians created a bit of music that we put on top of it, which was a piece from Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Suite. And for a while, we did actually call it Nutcracker, while I carried on drawing the graphics, which were beautiful programmer art at the time. But the problem that we had was really, how do we turn this into a product? How do we attach something to it that we could market the game um, and get people interested in it? I think it had been um, Banjo's Jiggy Juggle, and, and, and that actually had an animation. We had an animation of, of Banjo juggling jigsaw pieces. Ooh. And there was also a Saberman version. Over a period of time, Saber we Man. focused on other things and the game kept coming back because we knew that there was something there that we would like to have a go at. Then we were looking for a, an available rare character that would suit this game. And Mr. Pants was obviously top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> so it went through lots of different incarnations before it, it finally became its Mr. Pants. Ryan Stevenson, who was also fresh to the company, and I, I previously worked on the Banjo Game Boy Advance title, and then I'd been asked to draw Mr. Pants, <laughs> which I'm sure must have been the most difficult part of his entire career. He was <laughs> poking fun at this part-time project that I was looking at. And one day he quietly drew something. He turned around to me and said, this is what it should look like. And I, off my own back, because I was kind of thought it was quite an, an interesting idea, I went home one night and kind of drew and said, I think this is how you want it want it to work and brought that in and um, then I got involved in the, in the it's, it's Mr. Pants team and that's how I kind of like got in the, through the side shuffle as it were. It was beautiful, it was crassly drawn, it was silly looking, badly crown drawn as if a two year old had done it. <laughs> it had a, an essence to it that was fun. One of the things that I really loved about working on that project after that was Ryan and I were just having a laugh quite frankly and trying to make the game as stupid silly and absurd as we possibly could the pair of us sat there trying to be as silly as possible and so we had an awful lot of input into the design and this must have been a game that took game. forever all to get the art done people in the in the whole of the company were busy on other projects so basically we needed somebody to do some work on puzzle design all of testing got a chance to submit some puzzle ideas i did lots of pictures of stuff they weren't abstract things they were pictures and i think that kind of appealed to them so i ended up getting the the gig <laughs> as it were uh, inventing these puzzles it ended up being wrapped up in a candy colored coat of nonsense i did something fairly early on um with tim saying can you give me some kind of just give me a load of animal noises just give mucky a load of animal noises we decided to have a menagerie of animal and bird noises in there to reward you for all of the different shapes that you could clear every time you create it's mr bart chicken if you want. Um, that was about it really. <laughs> Robin provided uh, an awesome score for it, uh, particularly the main theme tune, which really crystallized the silliness of it and the slight perviness of Mr. Pants. For the music, it was just, I, I just looked at the sort of hand-drawn stuff, thought, immediately thought of Rhubarb and Custard, kind of hand-drawn uh, 70s kids cartoon, and it was all wobbly, yeah, kind of wobbly. Uh, Rhubarb and Custard was pretty oddball theme tune wise as well but then there was the band the Calyaks, which I really loved and they were also you know just nuts and I thought that's that could probably go pretty well with that but with Pan it is Mr. Pants uh, what about Conko and Sa what about Conko it was like he was born for pants he actually did it in his pants why did I say Conko that was banjo it was just really fun stuff to work on because it was just because it was daft and it wasn't it had to sound a bit pants it was just a, it was just a daft fun thing to work on. Obviously, we needed somebody to publish our uh, Game Boy Advance titles, and we got we got some that were finished and ready to go. So we got Banjo, uh, Game Boy, and then uh, Banjo Pilot, and Saber Wolf, and finally Mr. Pants. 
So we negotiated a deal with THQ for all four of those titles. If they, if they to were THQ. Them, to publish all four, which they agreed to. And it meant that, although they were all published, they published a minimum amount of It's Mr. Pants. <laughs> so I think we, we only got like 20,000 copies made. So it probably makes Mr. Pants the rarest of all the rare titles. One of our key themes was Mr. Pants. Mr. Pants is real? Mr. Pants only made like 20,000 copies? No, oh, not video games, not trading cards. That's not that bad. People in the UK, obviously. Pants was that we had to put pants on everything. We ended up with pants on pants. So when we got bought by Microsoft, I did a, a little picture for Mr. Pants um, on the Xbox with B, but all it was was a washing line with a pair of his pants on, and underneath just Mr. Pants online. So that's something that no one really. Mr. Really <laughs> pants would online. Would never ever get made. But it was funny. If you really wanted to invest in uh, our, our past glories, you should definitely go out and search out a copy of it's Mr. Pants. Lord. Okay. Uh, what else is there to watch before I end the stream? Mr. Pants with 3DS and Wii U. Like, so you know what? I'm curious about Viva Pinata because I always... I remember the TV show, but I didn't know it was a game. I don't even remember what the game is about. I just remember the TV show and the characters. Describing Viva Pinata to anyone is a bit weird. Very brightly colored um, garden simulator. Uh, a gardening game where you had to look after pinata characters or little cute animals in a garden and kind of like become friends with them and kind of follow them in a way. The player uh, attracts, uh, befriends, and keeps a host of potpourri creatures in their garden. It's just almost a garden of chaos that you have to try and uh, corral and control in your own special way by, and customizing it into, into your own image. It was a six-page document that Tim Stamford Six-page document, holy shit. Is he talked about a, uh, a hawk moth that he found, a hummingbird hawk moth that he found in his garden. And he, he'd just seen it one day when he was out. It was lovely and sunny, shining on a flower. And this really strange creature was hovering above one of the flowers. And he identified it. And then he looked about what sort of things he would need to make more of those appear in his garden. And that was the idea for the whole game. It's just kind of nature's nature's food chain and life cycle. So it's kind of like, can we can we turn that into into a fun game? We thought we'd be able to work on a kind of a mobile device of some sort. Um, you know, with this idea of starting with you know nothing and this one seed, and then you know ending up with a whole a whole sort of sort of menagerie of, of, of animals and stuff. Yo, and it's the one for the, the TV show. A pocket PC, which was like this little kind of handheld. Oh my god. PC device, which we thought was, uh, would be an ideal platform. It was portable, it had sufficient power, uh, and we could do all these ideas of how the pinatas moved around. Um, but the pocket PC was never to be, and we kind of moved it onto Xbox, which gave us the, uh, obviously, graphical fidelity and the grunt to make it look awesome. We certainly spent some time trying to work out what the pinata should look like. I was tasked with trying to come up with a style that would bring everything together. Um, and so there's lots of ideas about them being toys. Or I just remember the fucking TV or show. Or ragdoll thing. Um, or even just kind of like a, a generic cartoon uh, looking thing. But we want, what we wanted to do was something that made it all feel like a family. <laughs> Look, a cake like, toy. Um, some of the graphics and artwork around Luchador. And so I, I got this whole kind of Mexican thing kind of bubbling in my head at the time. And then realized that if we turn these characters into pinatas, um, it would gel the entire world together. So the the, um, the lizard is a pinata and the horse is a pinata, even though they're a different species and a different thing. It it still kind of gelled it all together. It was quite clear almost immediately that it was going to have a, a better home on a on a bigger console that allowed us to do more of the animal behaviour things that we wanted. 
because I think the first time I got my hands on it, it was still quite early. There was an awful lot of grass and there were some bunnies, which I always enjoy. Um, but my residing memory of that was the fact that you could you could mate pinyard to that point to create the offspring, but the mating code wasn't exactly solid. We really, really wanted the idea that that the animals behaved in their natural way, but we had to find ways for us to explain it to people that didn't just make us seem like we were filthy perverts. So, <laughs> <laughs> what we came up with was a uh, was the romance, the romance dance. Here's a jukebox from the opening. People just love those dance routines and it was perfectly charming and nobody, I, you know, we didn't really have any problems with people having, with having animals reproducing all over the screen. <laughs> the artist Neil Price said, look, why don't, I've got a great idea. You're here, walk down Viva Pinata. We can have a different style of music. And I was like, yeah, that's great. And I, I suddenly thought, just a minute, that's 60 animals. That's going to be about, so we had like 20 seconds of like dance music or ballroom dancing or metal or punk oh my god I made tons of fun making the noises for the animals like I did tons of them I can't even remember 60 animals or something like that initially we started looking at real animal noises but it it just felt wrong we suggested that the people on the team just took animals and then made noises for them we had all the animations in, in ready to go, so we could just come up to the music department, sit and watch the animations and try and make any type of noise that we thought would fit. <laughs> oh yeah, it all sounds like people making so those noises. The first game, it was proposed that we were going to do a DS version. A DS? It just seemed like insanity. It just seemed crazy to try and cram that huge game into such a small device. And... Um, we gave it to the team we had here, our internal uh, handheld team, and um, we kind of forgot about it. And then a few months later, I pretty much stuff was coming into the studio and we, and we were approving it. And it, it appeared, this, this version, this DS version of our enormous game that we'd struggled to get going on an Xbox uh, 360 and get all the features we wanted. And they pretty much had it feature complete on a much smaller, much more reduced handheld. Um, it said they did a, just an incredible job. D did Viva Pinata even come out on DS? Kind of rolled straight into the next game. Uh, it gave us a leg up that we could. Did Viva Pinata even come out on DS? But it did. Those three games? Those three games. Dude, this is wild to me because I can't not view it as the shell. I can't not think of the shell. How does the fucking. Do they talk about the shell in this video? Immediately working on the sequel. We had this big discussion about whether we should try and squeeze everything we wanted into six months and create some dlc or should we try and create some time like give ourselves 18 months and create a full sequel at the time we wanted different environments the desert we wanted underwater stuff we were talking about kind of having a kind of a whole expanded the universe of pinata to be a lot wider so it just seemed like a, a natural thing to do and as i say no one told us not to so we, we rolled straight into it we want to carry on to make what this the best that it can be so, um, yeah, I, I think Pinata 2 was pretty much driven out of developer passion. I'm really proud of the score. I'm back with music back there. I'm really proud of it. I thought I did a good job on that one. Thanks, Grant. Bedtime story from Viva Pinata 2. From my website, that one. Uh, that was my favourite. It was the last piece that we, we, we recorded in Prague. It was a really emotional tearjerker for me. And that, that one has really always been my favourite track of them. Still is still on to, to this day. And I remember I had to go... The recording finished, and the, the, the guy said to me, you should go out to the orchestra, thank the orchestra. And I kind of went onto the podium and went, you know, you've all played so... <laughs> and then burst into tears like that. I'm not activating Windows. There was all of these games Too much money. Kind of all kind of brown and green and blue, and then... Not worth it when I've already had this computer for like four years. Large and full of colours, uh, and offered a, 
a very, very different type of game to what was available. People really took it to heart, and we got reports back of some really interesting things. People playing the game and then doing things in the real world that were to do with our game. And one of those was, um, and was fairly widely reported at the time, was a guy that proposed to his future wife through our game. And he organized a garden. Um, he used the ring item that could be made inside, inside the game. And he'd, um, he'd invited her to a, a match that they shared together. And he, said, he sent a crate, I think, over with the ring inside. And the, marriage, and the message was a, a marriage proposal. The end result, really happy. I couldn't, I couldn't pick one thing that I thought, you know, w was a favourite. It was just the whole thing was just, it was a, again, another really great game to be made. The market's changed quite a lot now, where more different games and slightly more unusual games that seem to be far more accepted. So I think if something's pick up in, in a package full of lots of rare games, I think it will be, be well thought of, and, and it'll be a little, a little gem of, of kind of oddness. I think people like these unique items. It's a much deeper game than, than people think because it had that cutesy rare bit on the top of it, but underneath it was pretty competent. Hopefully, there'll be uh, people that have played it before will kind of rediscover the, uh, the, the kind of charm that the, uh, the garden had. But I think hopefully, there'll be a, a, a kind of a new set of players that will kind of hopefully appreciate the, the kind of being in a, in a really special world. I only remember the show. Why did it seem like there was three games? What is Party Animals? Oh, it's a party game. It's a party game not made by Rail Rail. Not made by Rail Rail. <laughs> Yeah, man, you joined literally at the end of the game, uh, end of the stream. I'm, d I gave up on Grab by the Ghoulies. I'm not gonna fucking finish it. Um, we've just been watching where we play videos. You missed the making of Mr. Pants and the making of Conkle. Four kids selected the series out of several Microsoft properties out of four kids. Oh. Approved by Rail. Cartoon is designed to give you tips on how to interact with the in game pinatas. The animated so little influenced the plot for Trouble in Paradise. I have no idea. I will figure it out before the stream happens. I just remember the show for this fucking franchise. I didn't even know about the games. What other ones are they all? Do 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 Well, there it is. Bosses slalom. Okay, this is this is a lot of games missing, y'all. There's a lot of games missing. I don't have. I don't have Sonic Heroes. They made so many games like Monster Max. They made Monster Max. David Wise did the soundtrack for Monster Max. Monster Max.
David Wise did the song. Yeah, this song kind of a bop actually. I don't know if the game's good, but the song was a bop. Can drift well made this. Fuck it. Oh. Wait, did this? When did this come out on sixty four? Oh, that's the first M sixty four game. Damn. Perfect dark and perfect dark. Oh wait, it's on the Game Boy Color. I forgot about that. And that's also on the Game Boy Color. It's Mr. Pants is on the mobile phone. Whoa. And then everything went downhill. It's it's kind of weird. They did those two, Killer Instinct. Did they? Didn't someone else make Killer Instinct? Yeah, it was Double Helix Games, and then I don't got. It wasn't even real. It wasn't even real. They were busy with Connect Sports Rivals. Can else do Battle Toads? Okay, it was a two developable thing. What is what is Everwild? What is the what is Very Well Walking on now? Yep, that, that's a 2020 video game. I really should end the stream. I've just been fucking around for literally, like, almost an hour now. So, um, this is the end of the stream. Um, Grab by the Ghoulies is a 6 out of 10. Um, goodbye.